Let's answer a question from an old grade 12 exam paper about percentage purity. Some copper carbonate is reacted with excess dilute hydrochloric acid to produce copper chloride, water and carbon dioxide. The reason why I'm highlighting the carbon dioxide is that we can see that this flask into which the two reactants are placed is put onto a scale. Why is that done? Because during the reaction, carbon dioxide, which is a gas, it's the only gas in the products, carbon dioxide gas is produced. And that forms bubbles which rise and escape you can see that the conical flask is open. And as that happens, this reading drops. The mass decreases. Why does it decrease? Because the mass of the carbon dioxide has gone. And so the total mass is less. And this question relies on that fact. So it says that during the investigation, we use both pure and impure copper carbonate. So we can see here's the graph. The dotted line is the graph for the impure copper carbonate. And then here, the solid line is the graph for the pure copper carbonate. And what's happening here? We can see that the mass of the flask and its contents is decreasing with time, which is what we discussed before. And the rate at which this happens tells us about the reaction rate. These are the questions we're asked to answer for this particular situation. You should try and answer these before you continue with the movie. Pause, go back, answer, and then unpause. First of all, write down the reaction time for the reaction. This is a very easy question. So how do we determine that? You can see that in both cases for the impure and the pure, what's happening is the mass of the flask and its contents is decreasing, but that decrease stops after a certain time. Here we can see that the decrease no longer happens. The mass of the flask and the contents is not changing, meaning that for this period here, no more carbon dioxide is being produced. Put another way, the reaction has stopped. So during this time here, the reaction is happening, but during this time here, the reaction is not happening. It has stopped. So we simply have to determine at what time does the graph become straight? Does the reaction stop? And we can see it's around about here. The graph is straight there. Similar for the impure. There's a range of times that is correct here. So this tells us that for this period of time, the reaction is occurring. That is the reaction time. And we read that off. 41, 2, 3, 4, 5 approximately. Maybe even 44. There's a range of answers, as I've said before. That is correct. We are told to assume that all the gas formed during the two reactions escapes from the flask and that the impurities do not react. In other words, we are told that we can take this change in mass to equal the mass of the carbon dioxide produced by the reaction. Now we are asked to calculate the average rate of the reaction of the pure sample. So we're only going to look at the solid graph for the first 20 seconds. So here we have the first 20 seconds. The rate of reaction can be measured as the amount of product produced, in this case, the mass of carbon dioxide produced, per time, in this case, per 20 seconds. So how much carbon dioxide is produced in the first 20 seconds of reaction? The mass of carbon dioxide produced is the same as the change in mass of the flask, because all that change in mass was due to carbon dioxide escaping. So we simply need to know the change in mass of the flask, and then we will know the mass of carbon dioxide produced for that 20 seconds. So the initial mass is 170 grams, and the final mass, we read it off here. So here we have 10 little divisions, and they are standing for 0, 0,05. So each division stands for 0, 0,005 grams. So here we have 169,75, and that little line would be 169,755. And so the line which we really want over there is 169,76 grams. 
So the initial mass is 170 grams, that's the mass of the whole flask, and the final mass after 20 seconds is 169,76 grams. And that change in mass is due to the mass of carbon dioxide produced. 170 minus 169,76 is 0, 0,24 grams. That's the mass of carbon dioxide produced during these 20 seconds, which gives us a reaction rate of 0, 0,012 grams per second. Now we're asked to calculate the percentage purity of the impure sample. What does percent purity mean? It means the mass of the substance we're interested in divided by the mass of the whole times 100%. Now this could be taken to be the mass of copper carbonate of the impure divided by the mass of the copper carbonate of the pure converted to 100%. And you can find each of these out and you will get the right answer. But there is a simpler way and that's to realize that the mass of copper carbonate that is actually present in the impure sample is related to the amount of carbon dioxide that it will produce, just as the mass of copper carbonate that is actually present in the pure sample is related to the amount of carbon dioxide that it will produce. And in this particular case, it's easier to determine the amount of carbon dioxide produced in each case than it is to determine the amount of copper carbonate that was actually reacting. And so we can give our formula of percent purity as the mass of carbon dioxide produced in the impure sample divided by the mass of carbon dioxide produced by the pure sample. So remember we do this reaction twice. In both cases we put 170 grams of the substance inside. In the case of the pure copper carbonate, all that copper carbonate reacts, produces carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide escapes and there's a certain amount of carbon dioxide which we can read off from this graph because it's the difference in mass of the flask from the start to the end for the pure copper carbonate. So that's going to tell us the mass of carbon dioxide produced by the pure sample. Then we do the reaction again, but this time we use impure copper carbonate, meaning that although it's 170 grams, the whole mass of everything, not all of the mass of the copper carbonate put in there is really copper carbonate. We call it copper carbonate, but actually only some of it is copper carbonate. The rest is impurities. So not all 170 grams will actually react to produce carbon dioxide. So now this carbon dioxide produced here will be less than if all the mass of those pellets were really copper carbonate pure copper carbonate. And we can see that in this case, the change in mass of the flask, which equals the mass of carbon dioxide produced here, that change is not as great as the change in mass of the flask for the pure copper carbonate. In other words, as carbon dioxide produced by the pure sample. So now we simply have to get what these masses of carbon dioxide are. So in the case of the pure sample, that is 170 grams minus this value here. Now remember we've already seen that each division is 0, 0,005 grams. So here we have 169,70. This would be 169,705,7 five and this one here one sixty-nine comma seven three. You can check that higher seven three five seven four seven four five seven five. So the mass of carbon dioxide produced in the pure case is 170 grams minus a hundred and sixty-nine comma seven three grams which gives us 0, 0,27 grams of carbon dioxide produced. That's the case for the pure sample. So we must remember that, 0, 0,27. Now we need to know what is the mass of carbon dioxide produced for the impure sample. And that's given by the change in mass from start to end for the impure sample. 170 grams at the start, 
and now we need to read this off for the end. Remember, each of the divisions stands for 0, 0,005 grams. So here we have 169,75. This would be 169,755,7,6,7,7,5,7,8,169,78. Let's continue just to check ourselves. 169,785,79,795,8. So the change in mass is 170 grams minus 169,78 grams, which is equal to 0, 0,22 grams carbon dioxide, and that's what the impure copper carbonate produces. So now we can answer our question. So the percent purity of the impure sample can be calculated in this case as the ratio of the mass of carbon dioxide produced in each case, one, by the impure sample, and two, by the pure sample. And then we convert that to a percentage. And we've already calculated from the graph, or read from the graph, that in the case of the impure sample, that is 0, 0,22 grams of carbon dioxide, whereas in the case of the pure sample, it was 0, 0,27 grams. 0, 0,22 divided by 0, 0,27 is 0, 0,8148, multiply by 100 and round off to two decimal places, 81,48. Next question. Calculate the maximum volume, which is in decimeter cubed, of the carbon dioxide produced during the reaction of the pure sample. And we've already seen that the mass of it is 0, 0,27 grams. So we simply have to ask ourselves, what is the volume, because that's what we're being asked now, of this mass of carbon dioxide, which we read off the graph? How many decimeters cubed is the volume of 0, 0,27 grams of carbon dioxide? Now you can do this in a number of steps, but you can actually even just do it in a single step by multiplying the question by a conversion factor. The conversion factor has to have the top and bottom being equivalent. And in this case, the equivalence is they're going to both refer to one mole. If we know that they both refer to one mole of carbon dioxide at STP, then they will be equivalent. Then obviously, the conversion factor must be useful. It needs grams of carbon dioxide at the bottom. And since this is referring to a mole of carbon dioxide, that's the same as saying, what's the molar mass of carbon dioxide? 12 for carbon, 2 times 16 for oxygen, 44 grams per mole. So one mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44 grams. What does one mole of carbon dioxide have a volume of? Because we need to have decimeter cubed at the top to introduce the required unit, which will give us the correct answer because the given unit is cancelled away like that. So how many decimeter cubed is the volume of one mole of carbon dioxide? 22,4. 0, 0,27 times 22,4 over 44. 0, 013745, if you want three decimal places, it'll be 0, 0,137 decimeter cubed. You may be required to round off to two decimal places, 0, 0,14 decimeter cubed of carbon dioxide gas.